You're tuned in to The Andrew Lawton Show. I want to talk about the uh, story that really piqued my interest at CBC, which I should say I do so you don't have to. I read CBC so that you don't have to. And I just deliver you stuff that I feel might rise to the level of being relevant or at least uh, relevant in the sense of, of being fodder for why the pledges to defund the CBC are increasingly compelling. This was a story that was like framed as though it was alerting us to the existence of some far-right radical Christian cultist conspiracy of some kind. Breakaway believers warn PC party of dominionist religious movement. Now, I'm, you know, a religious person myself. I understand trends in the religious world and trends in the political world. And they were, they were using terms in this that I've really not been familiar with, like dominionist and the other one that they acronym acronymize as NAR. I think it's like the, now I forget what it is, what it stands for, but it's like apostolic, there we go, the new apostolic reformation, which is kind of used more as a smear than anything else. But they talk about this a group of folks that have been assembling that are generally people of faith that have been mobilizing on a number of issues, particularly in New Brunswick, where right now people of faith, and I would point out people who are not at all connected to any religion, organized or otherwise, have been speaking up in support of parents' rights and in support of the New Brunswick government's defense of parental rights in school. And there was a photo that I thought was quite lovely from the Canadian Prophetic Council, which is one of the groups that has attracted the ire of CBC, uh, reenacting in front of the Lieutenant Governor's residence in Charlottetown, this famous photo that you may recall from 1864 in the lead up to Confederation. And Justin Trudeau should be very happy because unlike the original, we've got gender balance in this. We've got women represented, unlike those old sexist, misogynist, white supremacist, homophobe, uh, neo-Nazi fathers of confederation that Canada had. These ones are gender balanced and ethnically diverse. So you think that would make Justin Trudeau and CBC happy. But nevertheless, they are not. And they've actually found a few religious dissidents to cast aspersions on this group and its motivation, saying they want to make a Canada that's unsafe for marginalized communities, which if you look at what they're doing is actually nowhere near what they're doing. But I wanted to get to the bottom of this. Uh, Fatine Griseski joins us. She is a fantastic television host and also the founder of a group that is um, very much name-checked in this. That is For My Canada. And I've had the great privilege of being on Fatine's show and it's lovely to have her back here as well. Fatine, good to talk to you. Thanks for coming on today. Hey, Andrew. Always a pleasure to chat with you. So just for context here, what is For My Canada and what is the Canadian Prophetic Council? Because a lot of people, I think, have only heard of these for the first time through the CBC lens, which uh, is through the CBC lens. Yeah, well, you know, it, it, and there would be good reason why people haven't heard of it, because we're actually not super, super active on, quote unquote, the national stage. So For My Canada, ironically... Uh, was a group that uh, we used to go down to the streets in Vancouver and give out food, give out chicken noodle soup and hot chocolate to uh, the poor and drug addicted on the corner of Maine and Hastings there. And it was during that time, this was like mid uh, 2000s, that uh, we just got this desire. Like I was not a political kid at all. My dad played NHL. I thought the senators were a hockey team. You know, <laughs> I was so politically illiterate. But we just got this burden to begin to speak to our leaders about issues we cared about. And so I took this little band, we rented a minivan, we went across Canada and, you know, we were covered in lots of media at that time. The you know, uh, Winnipeg Press, I think, covered us and uh, there were different periodicals. And, and we just booked meetings with members of parliament and senators and just talked to them about things that we cared about. And there was a wide range of things that we would chat about. We'd talk about human trafficking. We would talk about freedom of speech. You know, a lot of the things that we're still talking about today you know <laughs> in different capacities and that began uh this basically almost a decade-long journey where we just started bringing teams to parliament uh usually a couple times a year We've had over 1500 sit-down meetings with members of parliament and senators i met with justin trudeau in his office uh when he was very first elected and you know what he said to me right out of the gates andrew he said, let's talk about my Christian faith. That was that was his opening line, you know? <laughs> yeah, let's like, let's talk about it. I would actually accept that offer from him now if he made know? it. And, and so I have to admit, though, we haven't been super active the last couple of years because those young people, 
became older people and we have babies now and jobs and, you know, we've gotten a lot busier, but we still have an email list and we still push stuff out, you know, when we feel people in our network need to know about something and be given opportunity to take action. I'm all about civic engagement. I'm all about, you know, if you care about something, get involved. You know, that's why we worked with Joy Smith on our human trafficking uh, bills. And that's why I do my TV show, you know, because I think I, there's a lot of stuff I care about. And so, you know, th that's basically the heart of it. In terms of the Canadian Prophetic Council, honestly, it's pretty benign as well. It's just a group of leaders from across Canada, uh, some pastors, people that lead different kinds of ministries that usually about once a year, we kind of got shut down during COVID, but usually about once a year, we'll just come together and we'll just pray together and share hearts together about what we're feeling about the state of our nation and what we can do to be positive contributors. So it's really as simple as that. Yeah, and, and it's funny, and I, and I don't mean this to besmirch any of the work that you're doing, because I, I think it's wonderful, but this doesn't come up on any of the discussions that I have as, you know, being these like really top, really hyperactive and hyper influential political groups, because by your own definition, that's not really what you've strived to be. But the way CBC talks about it is that, you know, it's you and a few evil, scary Christians just like pulling the strings on the political system from behind the scenes. And I, I mean, it's like if, if you guys were running the show, we wouldn't be in the problems we're in right now as a country well who, who knows you know <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know yeah you're absolutely right and like i said a few moments ago i'm just all about civic engagement so when i see something that that's happening and here i live in new brunswick we actually moved here we were part of the covid exodus out of ontario you know mm -hmm. and you know new brunswick has had a, a real surge of people actually from ontario and other parts of the nation and and so we're here just raising our family we moved here uh for community and uh you know and then premier higgs you know he sticks his neck out on this uh amendment to 713 saying hey we want to uh ensure sure that things aren't being hidden from parents in terms of you know what's happening with their kids at school in terms of their uh sexual health journey right and so you know i was uh talk uh oh we lost 18 see this is what happens when you uh you know get bill c11 is that anytime something like this comes up people all get suspicious that justin trudeau might be mucking around in the engine room we'll uh, get 18 back on the show in just a moment here but I, I want to just go back to the CBC article for a moment here. And, and the reason I, I want to is because the framing of this is that they talked to three people that used to be Christians that now are no longer Christians that really just take out their grievances on religion itself and their grievances on Christianity itself and Christian values and Christian communities. And then they use that as sort of their wedge to criticize the stuff that this group is doing. I mean, uh, the one woman in particular here, again, a, a former Christian who says that now all of the things that these folks are doing are, quote, making a really unsafe place for a lot of marginalized groups, especially queer people, especially trans people. I think we have uh, Fatine back with us, and we're uh, uh, sorry about that brief interruption, but we uh, have her back on the line now. Uh, Fatine, that, that's one of the big concerns I have here is that CBC is doing this thing that we often see from the media where they take former Christians, people that have had whatever their grievances are with the church, and they use them as sort of authorities on what the church represents. When a lot of the time, I mean, as we know, these stories come from a, a place of pain and any number of other issues that really have nothing to do with the subject matter. Yeah. And I, you know, my heart goes out to, to anyone that's been hurt by anyone, you know, and ju just to say that I'm not exactly sure uh, what's happened with each of the individuals that were interviewed. Uh, one of the individuals uh, did go to the same church that I went to. I'm not exactly sure all the stuff that might have happened there. I wasn't directly involved. Um, I did, you know, try to love on her in different ways that I could, but we, we were just really faint acquaintances, really, like I would see her on a Sunday or whatever. But I, I you know, I, I think we should all uh, do whatever we can to make peace, right? Like the Bible does say that blessed are mm -hmm. the peacemakers. Um, and so I encourage people to pursue those that have been broken and, and hurt in whatever way they have. But, but that's not what we're talking about here. Like what we're talking about here with the current situation is in New Brunswick is that parents have a concern 
it's a legitimate concern. Our, our parents actually have an appreciation, a legitimate appreciation, and mm. that's an appreciation for what Premier Higgs is doing. And they're seeing him getting beat up in the media, cabinet ministers falling off, the shakeup call for the leadership review. And so, you know, parents organize, you know, to support something that they appreciate in government. This has nothing to do with religion other than the fact that there might be a few of us that we happen to be Christian, you know, in the mix. But we yeah. actually, after we kind of felt the sense that CBC was starting to go this way and others, uh, we actually put um, uh, a survey question on the petition and said, hey, just let us know what background you're from. You know, are you Jewish? Are you Muslim? Are you Christian? Are you from a secular background? And um, and I can verify now that there really is a cross section of support. And so obviously, you know, it's disappointing to see the conversation kind of drug into the mud of, um, what might even cross the line of religious discrimination, like coming at me for my faith, you know, it's like, man, this has nothing, what happened with these people really has nothing to do with me, though my heart goes out to them. Um, you know, but let's keep focus here because, and I think if I could just say this, Andrew, like, Please. um, I long for a day, I don't know about you, but I long for a day where we can just raise the water level of civil discourse in the media, where we can actually talk about the issues that Canadians care about, stop with the labeling, stop with the shaming. You know, I heard somebody say once that if I can label you, I don't have to listen to you. Hmm. And, you know, we've seen that time and time again. You know, we've seen that with, you know, I hate to say it, with Justin Trudeau, you know, calling people that disagreed with his management of COVID-19 racist, misogynistic, you know, a little Métis woman. You can't like, how can you call a Métis woman? You know, but if I can label you, I don't have to listen to you. Right. And that's like, I just want to say as media people, let's take it higher. Like, let's just stop with the labeling and, and go a little bit deeper with the listening. And I think that's what was really disappointing about this. But, hey, I'm keeping my eye on the goal. We're going to continue to encourage people to be a voice, sign the petition, and support Premier Higgs in what he's yeah. doing. No, you're, you're quite right about that, Fatine. I mean, it was confusing because the article was conflating two organizations, two movements. I mean, obviously, they, they share a common participant in you and, and by extension, really trying to muddle the discussion around an issue that has been tremendously unifying. I mean, the number of Canadians uh, that, as you note, not from religious backgrounds, and even if they are religious, not necessarily from evangelical Christian backgrounds, that are supporting what Blaine Higgs is doing, that are supporting, in general, this cause of parental rights is massive. The governments that oppose this are in minorities, and certainly the media's narrative on this is in the minority. Yeah, yeah. And I would just go back to, let's just do more more listening. And uh, there is an overwhelming, this was actually one of the reasons that I felt to get involved in this, because I thought, man, if Plain, Blaine Higgs, excuse me, Premier Higgs falls on this mountain, so to speak, this political mountain, it really will be an injustice to democracy because I really believe authentically he is representing the majority of parents. You know, I had one parent say, and I think it was Chris Austin that actually said this in the Legislative Assembly, that, you know, parents, uh, you know, they, they need to sign off on, on if their kids go on a field trip, you know, if their, kid, if their kids go up the road to the zoo, you know, and to exclude parents from any part of their child's health and wellness journey at school, it just feels so counterintuitive for so many. And so um, I, I, you know, I just think we need to stay focused there. And, you know, it's unfortunate that some, you know, some people want to take it off of that, but I'm committed to keeping my focus here, Andrew. Well, I certainly wanted your voice to be out there to correct the record. You're doing a tremendous work on air and off. Uh, Fatine Graseski is the uh, host of Fatine TV, the founder of For My Canada. And it's been uh, my pleasure to be on your show, and I'm glad to, to repay the favor. Uh, thanks so much, Fatine. Thanks for your time, Andrew. Thanks for listening to The Andrew Lawton Show. Support the program by donating to True North at www.tnc.news.